Oh, I say, what a spiffing idea, Holmes, to go whale-watching for an hour or so from a balloon. <laughs> Around the whales in 80 minutes, eh? <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed, Watson. Very, very droll. But the best of it is that out here in the Pacific Ocean, there's absolutely no chance of that bounder Moriarty creeping up on us unawares. <laughs> no periscope! We'll soon see where those nincompoops Holmes and Watson have got to. Ah, there they are. They must be about 40 meters above sea level. Mm, to make sure they don't spot me when they're directly overhead, I'll dive to the bottom of the ocean, which is, let me see, uh, yes, 18 meters below sea level. So that tells me how I to fire one of my deadly submarine missiles to put paid to Holmes and Watson once and for all. <laughs> By George, that's a whopper of a whale, Holmes. That wasn't a whale, Watson. Uh, what was it then, a dolphin? No. Uh, a shark? Well, yes, you could say that, but a shark of the human variety. <gasps> Not... Yes, it was Moriarty and his deadly missile-launching submarine. I, I, I'm bailing out of here. No need for that, my dear fellow. Moriarty's missile won't reach anywhere near us. As a matter of fact, it will only reach four meters above the surface of the water. Bravo, Holmes. Oh, that must have taken another of your wonderful feats of algebra to work out, huh? Negative, Watson. Negative. Negative? Do you mean no? What are you talking about, Holmes? I'm talking, Watson, about negative numbers. Welcome to the Power of Algebra, Program 4. So far in the series, we've looked at operations that can be performed with numbers, inverse operations and the order of operations. We've also looked at some of the basic properties of numbers, the commutative properties, the associative properties, and the distributive properties of multiplication over addition. All of this has been about numbers that we normally deal with in everyday life. Numbers that measure things we can count. One brick, two bricks, three bricks. Or a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees. These are all positive numbers, but on a very cold day, the temperature can drop to the freezing point zero degrees Celsius, or even below freezing. Then we get into the whole world of negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. This is sort of like Alice through the looking glass where everything is back to front. I wave my right hand, and my mirror image waves his left hand. It's the same with positive and negative numbers, which are the exact opposite of each other. In fact, negative five means the opposite of five. If I turn the thermometer on its side, we have a number line. Starting at zero, as I walked into the positive side and go from plus one to plus two to plus three, I get bigger, because two is more than one and three is more than two. On the other hand, as my mirror image walks in the opposite direction into the negative side of the number line, everything's reversed. As he goes from negative one to negative two to negative three, he gets smaller because negative one is more than negative two, and negative two is more than negative three. Or to put it another way, positive three is greater than positive two. Negative three is less than negative two. Negative numbers aren't just used to measure below zero temperatures. They're also used when we balance a checkbook and find out whether we're in the red or the black, whether we have a positive or negative amount of dollars. The larger the positive amount, the richer I am. The larger the negative amount, the poorer I am. An elevator is another example of positive and negative numbers. Going from the ground floor to the upper floors, or going from the ground floor down to the basement levels, is like moving in the positive and negative directions on a number line. Going up in the positive direction, the third floor is higher than the second floor. But going down in the negative direction, it's the other way around. The second basement level 
is higher than the third basement level. If this were Alice in Mathland, going up in an elevator would make people grow larger. Going down would make them get smaller. I think I'll take the stairs. Welcome to National Weather Service uh, office, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We use a lot of math around here. Two big things that we use algebra for are for computing uh, pressures and temperatures for the monthly means and the hourly uh, pressure that we use here in the office to provide pressure data for aircraft flying in and out of Baton Rouge. In addition to algebra, we're also in the Pythagorean theorem here with uh, figuring triangulation for balloons and uh, things of this nature. Uh, we use calculus, uh, differential equations. We use uh, anemometer. We use a high growth thermometer. We use a microbarograph. We have a gust recorder. We have a visibility recorder. These are all the things that we use in doing our job. And because of the criticality of the weather and the exactness required for aircraft operation, it really helps to have that good math background. I picked up my training through the Navy. I went through the AG, aerographer's mate, A school, where they taught us the basics. And we had math, a lot of algebra, a lot of algebra, had a lot of physics, we had a lot of meteorology. It really helps to have that good math background. If you're lacking in math, your job is lacking. Solving math or algebra problems that involve positive and negative numbers can look difficult at first. We know that five minus three is two, but five minus three also means five plus the opposite of three. But what does three minus five mean? And what does three minus negative five mean? Take it one step at a time. Look at three minus five. The first step is to change these numbers into signed numbers by putting a plus sign in front of the positive number and a minus sign in front of the negative number. In this case, the five already has a minus sign in front of it. So all we have to do is put a plus sign in front of the three to give us positive three and negative five. What we're really doing here is adding negative five to positive three. So we need to put a plus sign between the two sign numbers. Now we have positive three plus negative five. Next, to avoid confusion, we put parentheses around the sign numbers. Finally, we make use of the number line, where a move to the right represents positive numbers and a move to the left represents negative numbers. We start at zero. Then we draw an arrow three units to the right to represent positive three. Next, starting at positive three, we draw a second arrow five units to the left. That represents negative five. Now, where this arrow ends up on the number line gives us the answer, negative two. Or to put it more simply, three minus five equals negative two. Okay, let's look at three minus negative five. We can also write it like this. Again, starting on the number line, move three units to the right. And that represents positive three. But then we have to represent minus negative five, which is sort of negative negative five. Which direction should that arrow go? Well, what does negative negative mean? Negative means the opposite of. Negative negative is a double negative. When I say I'm not here, that's exactly what it means. I am not here. That's a single negative. But when I say I am not not here, that's a double negative, which means I am here. It's the same in math and algebra. Negative negative five actually means positive five. Remember that negative five means the opposite of five. Therefore, negative negative five means the opposite of the opposite of five, or negative negative b equals positive b. So on our number line, having moved the first arrow representing positive three, three units to the right, we must then move a second arrow representing negative negative five, five more units to the right. And where this arrow ends up on the number line gives us the answer, positive eight. 
positive 3 minus negative 5 equals positive 8. Or to put it in algebraic terms, a minus negative b equals a plus b. And that's how you use arrows on a number line to help you work with negative numbers, even double negative numbers. If only Moriarty had understood this, his plan to do in Holmes and Watson would have succeeded. What on earth have negative numbers got to do with Moriarty's missile? I, I really do think you've gone too far in your mathematical comparisons this time, Holmes. You, you have to draw the line somewhere. You've got it, Watson. Good thinking. Oh, was it? <laughs> what is it that I got? You've got the key to understanding where Moriarty went wrong in his calculations. Drawing a line. You mean a number line? Oh, what a brain you have, Watson. Yes, yes, a number line. Only in this case, instead of a horizontal line, we need to think of a vertical line. Running from our balloon to... Moriarty's submarine. Now, where would you put the zero on this number line, Watson? <laughs> At uh, sea level, I suppose. Precisely. Uh, so the numbers on the number line above sea level will be uh, positive, and the numbers below sea level will be negative. Quite correct. According to our altimeter, we are 40 meters above sea level. So that's... Uh, plus 40, and according to this marine chart, the ocean is 18 meters deep at this point. So uh, that's minus 18. So, Watson, what is the total distance between the submarine and the balloon? Uh, 40 minus 18. Oh, Watson, Watson, that's exactly the mistake Moriarty made. If you work it through on our number line, you'll see what's wrong. Well, Right. Uh, distance uh, D, that the missile should travel, equals plus 40, plus minus 18. Now, uh, starting at zero... Watson, Watson, why are you starting at zero? Because that's what people always do with number lines. You also have to use your common sense in math and algebra, Watson. Did Moriarty's missile start at sea level? Uh, no, it started at 18 meters below sea level. Oh, oh, I see. Starting at minus 18, then, we, we, we move 40 meters in the positive direction, which takes us to uh, plus 22, and then 18 meters in the negative direction, so we end up only 4 meters above sea level, huh? Uh, by Jove, that's exactly what you predicted, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Uh, so what should Moriarty have done? Written his calculation down properly. Since he was starting at 18 meters below sea level, he wasn't adding negative 18 to positive 40. He was subtracting negative 18 from positive 40. Of course. And plus 40 minus minus 18 is the same as saying 40 plus 18 which is 58. <laughs> oh, no wonder the missile fell so short of us. Oh, you've triumphed over Moriarty once again, Holmes. Moriarty is so far beneath me in intellect, it's really quite one-sided. Just land us on that island, uh, there's a good chap, and you may serve me my picnic lunch, hmm? I, I think Moriarty is beneath you in, in more ways than one, Holmes, or rather one of his friends is. Perhaps we should eat at home. Oh, do stop fidgeting, Watson. Whatever Moriarty tries, I shall rise above. Oh, I <laughs> say.